Hello Story Chasers, this is Amber again, and today I have Carrie with me. She lives in a Class B van, kind of like me. She's also solo. We're going to find out today why she decided to build out her Class B van, and she did it all on her own. It's completely custom, and it's absolutely beautiful. I cannot wait to show you guys. I have a fixed width bed. I decided to go with a fixed width bed because I am lazy and can't be bothered to spend the five minutes taking up and ta making up and taking down a bed. And I find that just having it available to me at all times, if I have a long day, I pull over and I just want to take a nap, it is the best. But also I made the decision because I know that I have a lot of things that I want to bring with me. Like I have a road bike, I've got extra water, I've got towing accessories. And so I have all these things that I really just don't want to see day in and day out. And so having that extra storage space is really invaluable. So one of the other design decisions that I made was that I really wanted this van to feel open. Having transitioned from a really open trailer to a van, I didn't want it to feel claustrophobic like some of the smaller trailers do. Um, and so I have cabinets on one side, but I also made the decision to keep everything here open. That said, you really need to make the most of all of your vertical space. And so some of the most convenient storage options that I have are a series of hooks, both up here, but also underneath. And so underneath the bed, I've got a ledge that has storage for tools. It has um, my backpacking gear, my day pack, my dog's hiking backpack. Um, I'm not a climber, but if you had climbing or wetsuit gear, you could also hang it up there. I hang my um, dirty laundry, clearly, but really just making the most of vertical space that'll keep it out of the way and secure during travel is incredibly important. So I work full time while living in my van which means that you have to be very, very strategic about how you design your workspace and your living space. This is actually the second version of my van. And in the first version, I had my workspace here, which I thought would just be more convenient because I wanted a bench here to, it was my fainting couch. So the fainting couch didn't serve much purpose except for falling apart because I had built it. In the second version, when I when I hired a professional builder to redo the cabinetry and my counters, I decided that I wanted the desk space here. And so it doubles as both my kitchen and my workspace. And so although there's a lot of stuff here right now, all of this actually gets put away for, for travel with the exception of my monitor. But if I want to, I can go down like this, pull up my standing stool, and work like this. This is less convenient because normally my knees would go under here, but soon enough, maybe we won't need the crate here. But in the meantime, I have both a standing and a sitting desk because I'm never gonna be cooking at the same time that I am working. So I moved my workspace over here, which means that I have a beautiful view. I can keep an eye on my dogs when they're running around. If they're on tether, I can make sure that they're not getting stuck. Um, but more importantly, it means that I have a segregated workspace where I'm not, I'm not looking at my bed, whereas I was before. And so it just makes life easier for me to have this compartmentalized space that also neatly folds away when I'm traveling or when I'm getting ready to prepare food or really just at the end of my day. So I made a couple of very specific design decisions between V1 of my van and now currently V2. The first of which was I decided that I had to have overhead storage because in the first version I only had under counter storage and it just simply wasn't enough. Anything that I want to access very quickly or I'm frequently accessing, like dog treats when you have a puppy or when you're working and you're just looking for a snack, I put light accessible things up here. I also have my clothing in the space above the cab over. Under the counter I have more permanent stuff like things that I only bring out once a day at most like my air fryer. I've got an instant pot under there. I've got my long-term water storage under there and all kinds of things that I'm not trying to get into uh, several times a day. So I have a kitchen, but you really wouldn't know it until I start bringing the pieces out. So first of all, I, the important elements that everyone wants to know, I have a 50 quart 
portable truck fridge, 12 volt compressor fridge. I actually doubles as a bench. Uh, it's on slides stored underneath my bed. I also actually have a deep freezer, believe it or not. And so I have what's called an Alpacool. I actually just bought it a couple months ago, but it's been great. One of the downsides to having a chest style fridge is that it's one, this particular one is one zone, which means that I really miss out on longer term storage of meat and uh, frozen vegetables, that sort of thing. And so, and ice cream, don't mm. understate, undervalue ice cream. So now I can have all that and really at a marginal increase in um, electric usage. So my van is actually all electric. I have an electric hot water heater. I have electric cooking. I have um, a 12 volt compressor, fridge and freezer. So I don't have any propane on board. And that was by design because I was building my own rig. I really just didn't want to mess with propane. My electrical system, I'll talk about a little bit later, but I have a 1500 watt 2.5 gallon electric water heater, which is fabulous, which is stored right under here. Um, I have a 12 volt electric water pump and that draws out of two six gallon removable water jug. I don't have a permanent water tank installed anywhere in my van. I do have 35 gallons of fresh and six gallons of gray, all of which are in removable jugs. I appreciate the convenience of being able to remove those jugs, throw them in the tracker, take them into town. And honestly, I never run out of water because I'm always going out to do something. If I go into a national park, I can dump and fill simply by putting all of that stuff in the back of my tow vehicle. So the hot water heater is the one thing I would say, don't skimp on, get yourself a hot water heater. It's well worth it. That made all the difference when I was living in my van before and after. Um, I cook on my induction cooktop. Again, I have a 3000 watt inverter. It doesn't even break a sweat powering this thing. Uh, it boils water. I made spaghetti um, with, a, with a custom sauce last night. So it was both simmering on this with the tomato sauce and I made a separate uh, dish with the pasta in it. It used a decent amount of my battery, but this thing and the electrical system had no problems with it. Um, the other thing I would say is that I made a very distinct choice to get a chest style fridge. First of all, they're more efficient in terms of how they use the energy, the, the compressor. It's this, this one that I have, the truck fridge is the same compressor as the ARB or the, it has a Danfoss compressor, but it's half the price. So I'd highly recommend the truck fridge. I, it's been great. But when I had my trailer, one of the things that I loved about it was that whenever I would drive down a forest road, the latch would swing open. And trust me, I've talked to Dometic about that several times. But, um, you know, while I could see everything that I had, I could also see it all over my floor after a travel day. And so just having had a series of like bad situations with um, those, the side open fridges, I really made the decision and I completely stand behind it to get myself that uh, chest style fridge. So one of the downsides to the 12 volt compressor chest style fridge is that you can't see everything all the time. And so personally, I find myself burying my veggies in the bottom because I want them to stay cold, but because I don't see them, oftentimes I'll forget that they're there. And so that is one of the things where you just have to be very mindful of what's in your fridge because you can't see it all at once. So one of my absolute favorite features in my van is this cover. So I'm actually on my third set of counters for a variety of reasons. Um, but what I have finally settled on is a pine from Lowe's, just a slab of it that I found there and I epoxied it myself uh, for better or for worse. But the beautiful thing that I love about it is that it's super easy to clean. It's very durable. I put hot dishes on it constantly and I've had zero issues with it. Um, the sink itself is actually an undermount sink, but I have some of my friends had undermount sinks and they fell out. <laughs> so what I did was I actually have two layers. I believe this is three quarter inch wood, but I also have three quarter inch wood below it. That's a, you could almost call a sub countertop. And so it is actually bolted down into that counter. So I kind of get that cool recessed undermount look without actually worrying about it falling through. Um, my, this is also my bathing space. I don't have a full shower, unlike a lot of people. And I think that's one of the biggest myths of van life is that you need a shower. Now that said, I showered in town yesterday. <laughs> um, so it's not that I don't bathe. It's just that I don't have the convenience of doing it in my van. So when there are days where I just need to freshen up, I have my hot water heater 
there are other videos that'll tell you more about that, but suffice it to say, a year and a half in, um, appearances are very important for my job. I have a lot of video calls, especially when I was consulting, so I have to maintain a professional appearance. So being groomed and giving the impression that I have a professional polish continues to be important for my work. And honestly, you don't need a shower to do that. I find showers all over the place. I am actually one van lifer who has never had a um, a gym membership specifically for showering, uh, especially with the pandemic now, it's harder to find those places. Um, I actually really like truck stops. They have surprisingly nice showers for $12. You can spend as long as you want in there. They're very spacious. You don't feel like you're crowded. Um, I also love aqua centers. Like there's a beautiful one in Salida, Colorado, if you haven't been there. Um, I also go to community centers. Uh, they tend to have them and actually laundromats. They're usually those slightly more sketch laundromats, but uh, I've actually had some really, really great showers in laundromats too. This is actually my favorite part of my van. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love my bed, but this area is kind of my lounge area. It's also my hosting area. It's my dining area. It's my working area if I so choose. And so the beautiful thing about having this layout is I've actually got two swivel seats. Currently it's my dog's bed because I was traveling today and I haven't broken that area down. But if I'm gonna be in a place for a long period of time, I'll swivel both seats around, which really opens up this whole area, which makes me feel like I'm in a bigger space than I actually am. So Carrie, how long have you been traveling full time? Well, probably about a year and a half. Um, and if you remember, Amber, you were the first person I met on the road full time. You and I had coffee. I was one of your first subscribers. You no, were indeed. <laughs> I was your number one fan. So that was back in November of 2018. And I launched from the San Francisco Bay Area. So Carrie, what fears, if any, did you have when you started solo traveling? And if you did have these fears, how did you overcome them? Well, the second part of that question is really easy. I just did it and uh, overcame because every problem that came my way, I solved. I had a lot of generalized anxiety in my life in general. And so I was just kind of fearful of everything, not having good internet, not being able to like stay in a place. And I, I still, honestly, I still lose sleep over worrying about getting the knock, even though I never have a year and a half in. Um, and I just all of the things but I part-timed before I full-timed, which means that I had practice. And so I had the opportunity to rehearse things, figure out my rig, figure out that my first rig was not the right one. Uh, ended up getting a trailer and uh, yeah, just learning as I went along. What kind of gas mileage do you get on this? What's your average miles per gallon? So I have a 170 wheelbase uh, 2012 Dodge Mercedes Sprinter, or sorry, Dodge, Mercedes Sprinter. Uh, which means that because I have the diesel engine, I tend to get higher miles per gallon. Empty, I got about 22 miles per gallon. Built out, I get between 18 and 19. However, when I'm towing, that costs me two miles per gallon, so I get about 16 in general. And then if I have the AC on, uh, that takes another two miles per gallon. So I can get anywhere from between 14 all the way up through about 20, depending on the landscape and where I'm driving. And did you get any kind of special tires that would affect your miles per gallon? No, I actually just rock normal. Um, I think they're Michelin Defender, just uh, highway tires. Is it difficult traveling with pets and how do you handle it when it's hot outside? So that is a great question. So I have a van and a van is like a lunchbox basically. Like it just conducts heat like you would expect. So not only do I have a 98 pound Doberman, but I have a seven pound puppy. So I've got a unique combination of uh, challenges dealing with uh, having animals. So Carrie, why did you decide to sell your trailer and build out this custom van? Well, I had originally had a Class C, a Toyota Dolphin. Uh, it was adorable. I still miss that rig, but it cost me more to keep it on the road than it did for the original purchase price. So I ended up selling it before I went full time. I was searching for a rig in um, summer in California, which is everyone knows is particularly now is a bad time to buy. Um, and so I ended up, I couldn't find the rig that I wanted. So I got a rig that worked that I could tow with my vehicle, which was a Highlander at the time. And honestly, I, I'm amazed I lasted as long as I did in that trailer. It was a, it was a, an A-liner, which was very versatile. I could take it all kinds of places. It had 
13 inches of clearance. It was a really badass rig and I could take it anywhere, but it's really more suitable for someone who can physically lift the ceiling up. So I ended up building myself out of van because it balanced the convenience of the class C with the uh, sort of small footprint of my small trailer. And I believe you actually also tow a tracker, is that yes. correct? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so, so that's interesting. Most of the time you don't see van lifers who have a van and tow a vehicle yeah. behind them yeah. because the van yeah. is so nimble. So what's yeah. your reason for doing that? Well, it's cute. No. <laughs> um, so I, uh, the Mercedes Sprinters in particular, uh, mine's a 2012, which means it's got something called uh, a DPF or emission system, which means that it, and, and these vans in particular have a tendency to get them clogged up. I've, I just rolled over 50,000 miles and I've already had to replace the EGR valve on it. Um, fortunately it was under warranty, but next time I might not be so lucky. And so the emissions issues tend to arise from cold starts, stop and go traffic, and sort of the around town things that I was doing with my van. And so I bought the tracker because it allows me to go have fun with my friends who go on Jeep trips, for instance, but it also allows me to go into town with something. It's a gas engine, it gets 23 to 27 miles per gallon depending on how irresponsibly I'm driving but really it's intended to minimize the wear and tear on my van so some people would say including myself that uh, having the tracker and you're towing it with a van that's super nimble uh, might be a little bit of an inconvenience to actually tow something do you feel like it's giving you inconvenience you you had your van for a little while before mm -hmm. without the tracker uh, how has it really affected you since you added the tracker? Well, I had the... From a towing capacity. Yeah, well, so what I, the, the big issue is that I can't back up, which you really don't think is an issue. When I had the trailer, I could strategically jackknife to get myself out of really tight situations. I can't do that with the tracker because the way tow systems work, you can't, um, you can't back up with them. All right, so if there's anything you could change about your current setup, what would it be? So when I put on my solar, I have 600 watts of solar, which is amazing. I decided to go for a more streamlined look so that you really can't see it unless the, the solar panels, unless you're from farther away. I wanted to be stealth. So what I kind of wish I had done was I wish I had turned the panels on their side so they were actually overhanging a little bit. I mean, it would look not nearly as elegant as the van does right now, but I would have 30% more space for solar panels. Because right now I'm dragging around 200 watts of deployables and you know it's fine but they're annoying. I wish that there was a way that I could have both a fan and a, um, a skylight. I would love to have a skylight. I'm so jealous of Amber's skylight and hers. Okay so Carrie this is my last question to you for now. This is the number one question that I get from my subscribers and that is how do you actually make a living on the road? So I work in tech. I am what's known as a data scientist, which effectively means that I do high-end statistics and um, artificial intelligence, and that's, you know, there's a lot of buzzwords that go with that. I have been doing that for the last three years, um, and I really just, I actually was a research scientist for a long time. I finished my PhD in women's health in 2015. I worked in research, really enjoyed that, but made us made a career change so that I could work remotely and so I worked in consulting I taught and I work for a government entity at this point um, and I really just enjoy the uh, problem-solving aspects of it but I, at the end of the day I still am in front of the computer for eight hours a day but it's kind of hard to get away from that if you want to be working full-time <laughs> So I work full time for a living. It's something that. Oh, hello. Cut that. No, I like oh, it. Sorry. Actually. You can see so much of your <laughs> personal touch. Yes, thank you. Jay, we're gonna cut that. <laughs> okay. 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 Yep. So Carrie, thank you so much for showing me your rig. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed being in your home and seeing. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, thank you so much for showing me your rig. I really enjoy being inside your van and you showing me everything about it and how you actually custom build it. We can see so much of your personal touch and everything that you've done to it to make it beautiful. And I love that you wore a matching dress today. <laughs> It's absolutely amazing. So thank you, Carrie. And I know people are gonna have questions for you. So where can they reach out to you if they do have some questions? 
So I don't have a brand, but if you want to follow me on Instagram or contact me on Instagram, I'm at keep up with Carrie, K E R I on Instagram. Perfect. Thank you so much, Gary. And thank you, Molly. And Keith. <laughs>